Praise the Lord for granting us this beautiful Sunday to worship Him again. Human life is sacred and it is the greatest gift of God to us. Sadly, the number of suicide cases has been gradually increasing in the world. It is reported that about 8 lakh people commit suicide every year in the world. The National Crimes Record Bureau reports that more than 1.39 lakh Indians died by suicide last year, that is 2019. Studies have shown that suicide is the most common cause of death for the age group of 15 to 24. Since 2003, World Suicide Prevention Day is observed on 10 September to create awareness to prevent suicide in the society. On 10 September 2020, the World Suicide Prevention Day was observed around the world with the theme Working Together to Prevent Suicide. Suicide has become a serious global concern in the contemporary world. One of the ways to prevent suicide is to find the divine purposes of life on earth. Therefore, I have chosen to preach today on the topic Divine Purposes of Life. It is my prayer that God will bless us through this sharing. What is the secular purpose of life? To be secular is to live one's life without any belief in any supernatural being or power. To be secular means to live one's life without practicing any religion whatsoever. The popular secular belief holds that there is no divine design of the universe. Rather, everything came into being spontaneously by itself. It holds the view that human beings are capable of being ethical or moral without religion or belief in any God. The purpose of life is to live, earn your livelihood, enjoy life and be gone when the time comes. The secular world does not believe in God or religion and so it does not give any hope beyond this life. In sharp contrast to the secular worldview, the Bible teaches that nothing came into being by itself. The Bible teaches that God created everything and He is in control of all things that exist in the universe. Genesis chapter 1 and 2, John chapter 1 verse 3. How do we find the divine purpose of life? When we travel, we always set out with a destination in mind, that is to reach a particular place. If you don't have a destination to reach, your journey has no meaning because it has no purpose. Living life without knowing the purpose of life is like a journey without destination. Finding the divine purposes of life is important to live a fulfilled life. In this regard, an American Baptist pastor author Rick Warren writes, Without God, life has no purpose, and without purpose, life has no meaning. Without meaning, life has no significance or hope. The Bible teaches us that God created us with divine purposes for our lives. Let us examine some of the divine purposes of life. First, to accept life as a gift from God. The first purpose of life is to accept life as a precious gift from God. There are over 7 point billion people in the world today. The fact is that no one could decide to be born or choose the gender before birth. Life is God's greatest gift and God controls our lives. The Bible tells us that God created humans in His image, and I quote, So God created humankind in His image. In the image of God He created them. Male and female He created them. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Acknowledging God's design and gift of life, the psalmist writes, For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Psalm 139 verses 13 to 14. 
God not only formed our beings in our mother's wombs, but he created us for special purposes. Through the prophet Jeremiah, the Lord reveals his divine plan for the life of Jeremiah. The Lord said to Jeremiah, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. All this text clearly reveal that God is the designer and giver of all human lives on earth. Besides, God also assigned people to do certain things in life here on earth. Dear friends, what is your thought about human life on earth? Have you ever thought why people, especially young people, commit suicide? It is not only the poor people, but even rich and celebrities take their own lives. People take their own lives because they don't find the purpose of life and they don't have hope. Those who don't acknowledge God as the giver of life will not find the real meanings of life. If you believe that God created you for a purpose, you will not take your own life. Taking one's own life is not only a social crime, but an unforgivable sin against God the Creator. The Bible teaches us that we have not come into this world by chance or randomly. The Bible clearly teaches us that God created us with His divine will for a purpose. You are not born by accident. You are born because God has designed your life. Do not take your life for granted, for God has created you wonderfully to be His child. Your life is a precious gift from God. Second, to love God with our whole lives. The second purpose of life is to love God with our whole lives. God created us as His children so that we live in fellowship with Him. But the Bible tells us that the first humans disobeyed God and their love for God diminished. Despite human wickedness, God continues to love us and He wants us to love Him. Therefore, the Lord gave the laws that require people to love Him with all their lives. God commanded the Israelites through his prophet Moses, saying, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 This is the greatest commandment of the Lord, and all devout Jews try to obey this commandment. Out of love, God gave the laws to the Israelites so that they might obey the laws and love him. But when the Israelites could not keep the laws out of great love, God sent his begotten Son into this world for our salvation. John 3.16 When Jesus was teaching the people in Jerusalem, a lawyer from among the Pharisees asked Jesus a question to test him. He asked, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Matthew, 20, Matthew 22 verse 36 Jesus took the opportunity to teach the people about the commandment to love God. Jesus responded the lawyer with a quotation from the scripture. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. Matthew 22 verse 37. Jesus affirms the law saying that we must love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all our minds. In other words, we are required to love the Lord our God with our whole being. Dear believers, do we love the Lord our God with our lives? There are many things in the world that require our love and attention in life. We love our family members, we love our friends, we love our studies, we love our jobs, etc. We not only love this, but give due attention to all this as parts of life. It is not possible to ignore our families because we love God. Likewise, it is not right to ignore our works in the name of serving God. The fact, however, is that many people give too much importance to their families or other works at the cost of loving God. For instance, if you open your shop and skip Sunday worship, 
your priority is more on making money rather than worshipping God. God loves us so much that he offers us salvation through Jesus Christ. In this regard, the Apostle John writes, We love because he first loved us. 1 John chapter 4, verse 19 Are you loving God today more than anything else in the world? God loves you and he wants you to love him with all your heart, soul and might. Therefore, love the Lord your God because he loves you. Third, to love one another as children of God. The third purpose of life is to love one another as children of God. God does not show any partiality to anyone because every race and every tribe is his creation. God reveals his will to us to love one another. The Lord commanded Israel through the prophet Moses, saying, You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Leviticus chapter 19 verses 17 to 18 The human nature is that we all love ourselves and take care of ourselves. God commands us to love and care for fellow humans as much as we love and care for ourselves. The lawyer asked Jesus about the greatest commandment in the law. Jesus not only told him of the greatest commandment, but also told him of the second greatest commandment of God. Jesus responded, the lawyer, by quoting Leviticus 19 verse 18. Jesus said, And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On this two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Matthew 22 verses 39 to 40. Jesus once again affirms the commandment to love one another as children of God. Dear fellow believers, do we love and care fellow humans as we love and care ourselves? There are many Christians who do not show any love for other people. There are many Christians who do not care for the lives of others as long as it is to their advantage. This is the reason why we have injustice, corruption and all kinds of violence in the name of race, tribe and village. If every Christian knows and keeps the command to love one another, there will be no injustice, no rape, no violence in Christian society. But the reality is that many Christians are not serious about loving others. The Apostle John teaches that people who claim to love God but do not love fellow brothers and sisters are liars. He exhorts that all those who love God must love one another. He writes, the commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. 1 John chapter 4 verse 21 God is pleased with us when we love one another as children of God in the society. Let us decide to love others and care for them, for we are all children of God. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us all thank God for our lives. Let us not take life as a burden, but take it as God's greatest gift to you and me. The Bible teaches us that God created each one of us wonderfully with a divine purpose. In this sermon, we have examined three divine purposes of life. The first purpose of life is to accept that our lives are precious gifts from God. We cannot and should not take our lives for granted, for our lives belong to God. The second purpose of life is to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, souls and minds. As believers, our priority in life is to love the Lord our God with our whole lives. The third purpose of life is to love fellow humans as we love ourselves. Every life is God's gift, and God loves everyone as much as he loves you and me. God has commanded us to love others 
as all humans are children of God. If we know the divine purposes of life, we will live purposeful lives with hope in Christ. Having reflected on the realities of life, the teacher concluded, The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for that is the whole duty of everyone. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 May God be gracious to us and help us to live knowing the divine purposes of our lives. Amen.